My understanding is, is that you went out with this protector of yours who swore that you were uh, his adopted guy. Son, yes, Christian. yes. Went out, in fact, and helped in the confiscation of property from the Jews. That's right. Yes. I mean, that's, that sounds uh, like an experience that would send lots of people to the psychiatric couch for many, many years. Was it difficult? Uh, uh, not, not, not at all. Not at all. It, uh, maybe as a child, you don't you don't see the connection, uh, uh, but it was it created no no problem at all. No, no feeling of guilt. No problem. No. If it's your decision to defend George Soros, then there's going to be a whole new chapter to our relationship. Make your decision. It's not a threat. It's the way it is. You make your decision. You decide which side you're on. It's, it's real simple. You should be defending internet free speech. You should be championing things. You could change history. You're a major leader. You do have the biggest podcast in the world. Your audience rivals mine. That's great. I hope it's 10 times bigger, but not if it's in the hands of the globalist. If you turn over to Palpatine and become Darth Vader, I'm Obi-Wan Kenobi and I'm coming for you, buddy. trying to be Joe Rogan, a lapdog of the system. I'm trying to change the world, and I'm doing it. And as for Joe, since I brought that up, I meant to do this, I'm going to do it now. Cue him up if you can find it. I was going to do it last week, and I didn't do it. I'm doing it because I, I don't lose sleep over nothing, and I've been losing sleep over not saying this, so I'm going to do it right now. Cue him up saying that George Soros was captured by the Nazis. Now, you got it? Good. Joe, I don't care about coming on your podcast. I don't need to come on your podcast. But my point is, though, I know you're as smart as I am or smarter. And I sit there and I watch what you do on your show where I'm wrong about Bourdain, but then you have your guys go, oh, look, we discovered the Clintons were after him and he was this and that. And, 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 then, and then, oh, and then Alex, you know, Alex... Alex is, yeah, he, he, you know, he's just wrong about all this stuff. And, you know, he says Soros worked with the Nazis. Soros was captured by the Nazis. Hell, Joe, why not just say he cut Hitler's head off and fought him at a castle and, 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 and Hitler was guarded by 5,000 werewolves and, 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 and naked strippers in SS uniforms? I'm not stupid. I get to hear my son listen to his podcast almost every day. I hear it. To the point of, I don't want to watch it because I don't want to start saying stuff because I care about Joe. Joe's a good guy. He's done a lot of good work. He's really a libertarian patriot. But he's out there in Los Angeles with his family. And every time I see this stuff, he's misrepresenting what I've said and what I've done. He says, oh, I like Alex, but then he snipes me. Oh, I like you, Alex. Ugh. Um, so, oh, I like you. Alex is a good guy. Ugh. He's wrong. He's wrong. He's wrong. He's wrong. He's like, he's like my other best buddy. Eddie Bravo, Eddie, you're a crazy dumbass. Boom, slam your head in the ground. Aren't you a nice little guy putting up with me saying that? Well, listen, I'm not stupid when I watch all that. I'm not dumb. I don't sit here and play Machiavellian games. I'm a straight shooter. I'm from Texas. So, that said, that's what I'm getting at here. If Joe Rogan came out against the censorship on the internet going on, that would change a lot of things. And we get other people to do it. But there's this thing of people that are kind of quasi-conservative sitting back while the big battle goes on and while the EU tries to ban free speech and while they come after everybody to kind of, oh, back off from Alex Jones a little bit and say that the hat tip, just say Soros was captured by the Nazis. You don't think I haven't been told that too? So I'm just disappointed. I'm disappointed in the way I've seen things go. But I understand, I come on your show, it's your number one podcast. Now you've had two that are bigger, that's great. Number one, it gets blocked from Apple iTunes, gets delisted and gets blocked everywhere, but still was number one for a year. I already know I'm number one, Joe. I already get that. It isn't about being number one. It's about changing the world. And you have the power to do that. Because let me tell you something, Joe, they're going to release bioweapons soon to try to stop Trump in this movement. And no matter if you got a private jet or not, if you're going to try to join the system, you ought to be trying to move in with them. Because let me tell you something, you're not going to be safe and nobody's going to be safe. We better change this or we're all going to fall together. So I'd rather just be attacked straight up, Joe. Give it all to me. Come on.
than the, man, I really like Alex Jones. Uh, he's a really good guy. Uh, he's a little bit funny guy. Uh, you think I'm stupid? Now go ahead and play the clip of him saying Soros. When we come back, I'll play Soros saying he helped round people up for the Nazis. Here's reality, Joe. Here it is. But that's another thing. I don't know what to do with her now. She thinks she she apologized for that. But she said George Soros was a Nazi or something. Yeah, you know, I, saw, I saw the apology. He was captured by the Nazis. I mean, he was like <sighs> that whole Roseanne thing was done with her multiple personality. She says she was put there. That show was discredit conservatives. That whole thing was done so she could apologize to him in a PR stunt. You think I don't know when the Young Turks and CNN and ABC News all say he wasn't a Nazi and he fought Nazis, that it's not a PR stunt? You don't think I don't know I've already been threatened to stop saying it? I will continue to say it because my soul ain't for sale. Now, we're going to your calls when we come back, but first... There's a bunch of clips of him on NPR and on 60 Minutes admitting he helped the Nazis. But let's get the full clip. You're going to hear him say it not once, not twice, but three times. You know what I heard, Joe? I heard Hitler fought the Nazis. Yeah, I heard he got captured by him. Hermann Goering, Heinrich Himmler, Zeb Dietrich, all of them, they were fighting the Nazis at the Maginot Line in 1940. Yeah, did you know that? Yeah, did you know that? And you know who the bad guys were? It was America, I heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was my grandfather's. They were the bad guys, right? In the Army Air Corps, uh huh? I could see for miles and miles and miles. And sometimes I don't want to see him. It's my friends. Joe Rogan's a really smart guy, a, a, very sophisticated. And he's a good guy at his base. But he's out there in Hollywood, and there's a litmus test now to say George Soros was captured by the Nazis. Well, if George Soros was captured by the Nazis, he'd have one of those IBM tattoos on him. No, George Soros wrote a book. His father wrote a book. He did an NPR interview, a PBS interview, and a 60 Minutes interview saying he helped with his adopted father, the Nazis, and he said if he hadn't done it, somebody else would. And then he helped round up Jews. When he was 13, 14, 15. Now, listen, if he said, I'm sad, it was wrong, uh, I did it to live, I'd still say, well, you were young, but that's really crappy. But no, he said it, it blew up in his face back in the 90s. So now he's got this PR campaign going all over the news saying he's not a Nazi, he's not a Nazi, he's not a Nazi, he never worked with the Nazis. He was a collaborator. And, you know, the Young Turks call me the worst person in the world for lying about him saying he's a Holocaust survivor. Would you be a Holocaust survivor if you were in a concentration camp and you helped pull the switch to gas people? And he didn't even do that. He was off in Eastern Europe, Hungary, Romania, going around rounding people up for the local banker. And they knew full well he was Jewish. I think the Nazis didn't know that. There's whole books written on how they had Jews like him that would go in. They would trust teenagers. And so they would send him in to find out where people like Anne Frank were hidden. Yeah, George Soros went and found the Jews like a little bloodhound demon. He's a Nazi bloodhound. That's what he is. And he's financing lawsuits against me, everything to shut me up. I don't care, you piece of crap. I'm not a little rollover like you. You may have gotten threatened by authoritarians and rolled over, buddy boy, but I didn't. And when I was 15 years old, I didn't roll over to 25-year-old men. So don't tell me if I was back then, I made a difference. Look, I'm from Texas, I'm from America, and my ancestors aren't cowardly scumbags like you. And since you did that, you overthrew a bunch of countries, you bankrupt people's pension funds and steal them. You were a known criminal till the 90s, till you made hundreds of billions and came over here and bought up our media to tell, tell us how you crap Tiffany cufflinks and you little wings, you fly around in heaven. You're some, no, you're a degenerate, monstrous scumbag. You're a vampire bat that drank the blood of your own people. And you're gonna go to hell. And I'm going to win, and America's going to win. And we're breaking, you're getting thrown out of Europe right now. Everything you're doing is turning to pure crap. You've got a crap touch, not a Midas touch. Everything you turn now disintegrates, you old stinking vampire. <laughs> and it doesn't matter what happens to me as long as we win the war. That's what this is all about. You're all about yourself, you little Satanist. So, 
every time one of your people comes out and says you fought the Nazis or you cut Hitler's head off or you know all the or you murdered Hitler or you're a hero, I'm going to use them to expose it. So you better get your internet ban in real quick. You cockroach. Anyways, as for Joe, I just want to get Joe's attention that whoever told him that and whoever told him that was a good thing to say is not a good person in my view. Or or is that your decision, Joe? Because if it's your decision to defend George Soros, then there's going to be a whole new chapter to our relationship. Make your decision. It's not a threat. It's the way it is. You make your decision. You decide which side you're on. It's, it's real simple. You should be defending internet free speech. You should be championing things. You could change history. You're a major leader. You do have the biggest podcast in the world. Your audience rivals mine. That's great. I hope it's 10 times bigger, but not if it's in the hands of the globalist. If you turn over to Palpatine and become Darth Vader, I'm Obi-Wan Kenobi and I'm coming for you, buddy. Let's go ahead and play George Soros and what he doesn't want you to see. It was actually probably the happiest year of my life, that year of German occupation. For me, it was a very positive experience. It's a, a strange thing, you know, because you see incredible suffering around you, and, and in fact, you are, you are in considerable danger uh, yourself. But you're 14 years old and you don't believe that it can actually touch you. You have a belief in yourself, your belief in your father. It's a very happy-making, exhilarating experience. And pause. Back it up. It's a very happy-making. See, he was captured by the Nazis, and it was happy-making, like happy meals. Little cheeseburger, little cookie, little toy, little fries, little orange drink. Happy-making. In fact, that's what you call the Holocaust now, according to Soros. I think that's terrible, but instead of calling it the, you know, the, the Holocaust or the death camps, it's a happy-making. Here, let's go back to the happy-making. But you're 14 years old and you don't believe that it can actually touch you. You have a belief in yourself, your belief in your father. Lucifer. It's a very happy-making, exhilarating experience. While hundreds of thousands of Hungarian Jews were being shipped off to the death camps, George Soros accompanied his phony godfather on his appointed rounds, confiscating property from the Jews. Happy making. These are pictures from 1944 of what happened to George Soros's friends and neighbors. The happy making. You're a Hungarian Jew mm -hmm. who escaped the Holocaust mm -hmm. by posing as a, a Christian. Right. And you watched... Lots of people get shipped off to the death camps. Right. I was 14 years old. And I would say that that's when my character was made. In what way? That one should think ahead, one should understand and, and anticipate events. Uh, and uh, one, one is threatened. It was a tremendous threat of evil. I mean, it was a, a very personal experience of evil. Good my understanding. See, because I could just show the shorter clips. And, no, no, I mean, I'm showing what he says. It's the delusional. He's helping all this go on, but then he says it's the best time of his life. He's happy making, but then he's, he's not with the Nazis. He's just helping them. No, and this is the attitude. Oh, I'm just going along with it, so I'm okay. Oh, kind of like going along with internet censorship? I mean, maybe if Joe goes along with us being shot off the air and all the libertarians and conservatives, but he stays on, it'll be a happy making. I mean, he's not going to be part of it. He's just going to stand by and watch it happen. Or you could be like George Soros and actually help round people up. But it's how you survived, like free market. So it's okay. Let's continue. The experience of evil. My understanding is, is that you went out with this protector of yours who swore that you were uh, his adopted godson. Yes, Christian. yes. Went out, in fact, and helped in the confiscation of property from the Jews. That's right. Yes. I mean, that's, that sounds uh, like an experience that would send lots of people to the psychiatric couch for many, many years. Was it difficult? Uh, uh, not, not, not at all. Not at all. It, uh, maybe as a child, you don't you don't see the connection, uh, uh, but it was it created no no problem at all. No, no feeling of guilt. No problem. No. For example, that uh, I'm Jewish, uh, and here I am watching these people go. I could just as easily be there. I should be there. None of that. We got to go to break. Yeah. There, there's more. There's more. I, I want to apologize to George Soros and my good friend Joe Rogan. You're right. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, the full name of the video that he's in is Joe Rogan talks about Tommy Robinson. And then you just hear about how I'm wrong about all these things. I, you're right. You're right. Joe, hey, 
I'm the bad guy. I'm sorry. George Soros, I'll kiss your big fat butt. I'm sorry, George Soros. Thanks for killing Hitler, George. It wasn't my grandfather's. You did it. Let me say one more thing about the Joe Rogan situation, and then I'm going to go to your calls. Joe is a smart guy, a sweet guy, a strong guy, and that's why it hurts to see to see him spanked by the system. And, you know, when they wouldn't put up our podcast on iTunes or delisted it when it was number one and did that stuff, that was a strong message to him. That if you want to be left alone, don't have people like Alex Jones on. Well, that's fine. But then if the drumbeat starts, because I'm a busy guy, I can't listen to long podcasts, but my son does, people around the office do. Joe has the biggest podcast in the world. Probably reaches conservatively 50 million people a month. That's a conservative number. And that's great. But then if it becomes an exercise, oh, Alex Jones is wrong about Anthony Bourdain. Hey, hey Joe. I talked to the people that were there in the production at the highest levels. They're involved in the Pentagon, everything else. I know all about it. Elon Musk. I mean, I mean, Joe, I'm not going to tell you, you know, who I talked to yesterday or who I talked to this afternoon. So just let's quit pretending that we aren't the tip of the spear. And then Joe takes DMT and talks about seeing space aliens and other dimensions. And then I talk about the globalist taking drugs and believing they're getting knowledge from other dimensions. And I'm the biggest kook in the world. Oh, I had Alex on. People think I like Alex. I like him as a friend, but he's a total nutball. I had him on. He talked about interdimensional child molesters, psychic vampires. You know, he's crazy. Oh, really? I don't take DMT. It's fine that you do. I'm a libertarian. And then, and, and, and then I don't sit there and think I'm communicating with aliens. The people I'm talking about do. Because if you're a good person and you take the DMT and go to the fifth dimension, sixth dimension, if you believe in that stuff, they act real friendly, but Mescalito gets mean later. He's a goat, by the way. It's Baphomet. It's who you meet. It happens to basically everybody. Unless you're a really good guy. And then you get transported to a space prison for a couple hundred thousand years. And then when you come back, you don't ever come back. Now, I've never taken it, but I've talked to people. I knew about this when I was a kid from people that I knew that were involved in CIA trials at Berkeley. Oh, tell me about DMT, Joe. Tell me all about, you know, how you popularized it in the last 15 years. The Clockwork Elves, Joe. I heard about the Clockwork Elves when I was a little kid. And I decided I don't want to see them. Because everybody sees them. Little goat creatures with little green hats and little green uniforms. It looked just like gray aliens. Then they pull their mask off and they don't look quite like that anymore. They wear little gray masks so they don't get too scary. Because they look like little gremlins, little demons. Now, see, you'll probably play that and say, look how crazy you believe in little gremlin demons. No, you do. You talked about it. You saw it. You believe it. You. I didn't take it. The Bible says don't be part of pharmakia because it gives you the evil spirits. Okay, I didn't used to believe that growing up. And then I learned the CIA is taking this to get interdimensional communications. You say you've had those interdimensional communications, Joe. I haven't had them. You have had the communications, but I'm the kook for saying that the owners of Time Life books in the 30s were taking DMT? You know where you get DMT, don't you, Joe? In deep sleep. See, I don't need to go there artificially. I let my brain and my soul decide what I do. I let God direct where I go. And I've been a lot further than anybody that takes DMT, let me tell you. Because I got the DMT. Alex Jones got a lot of the DMT. The DMT. The DMT. Every night I go to sleep, it's like a thousand years my waking life is not even one fraction of who I am. Oh, believe me, Joe, I know all about the DMT, the DMT, the DMT. So, I made my point, and I'm done. But I've got to not listen, because I'll get too mad. Bourdain said the Clintons were after him, that henchmen were after him, that he was being harassed by them. Uh, he had decided to go public because he was dating a woman who had been raped by Weinstein reportedly and whose father was a famous occultic Illuminati filmmaker, which she said. And she told Bourdain about the sex abuse of children, and Bourdain had a soul and was getting ready to go public. I've talked to the people that were there. Elon Musk has exploded in anger over the fact that I even know about the video they shot for the TV show. But Bourdain is dead now. 
tragically, and they got rid of his body faster than they did with bin Laden's in the ocean, if you believe that. Abracadabra, hocus pocus. He really, oh, just whatever happened to Bourdain? Oh, he just dead now. And that final cut they were going to put out, all these episodes since he woke up, plus it gets you top ratings anyway, he's telling the truth. He was going to go Kanye West. You ain't going Kanye squat, brother. We going to hang your ass. And anybody ask any question, you're a weirdo. Well, isn't that just cute? Yeah, there's Bourdain saying he's been experiencing Hillary's wrath, and it's no fun. But you know, Alex Jones is wrong for even asking a question. Again, I'm sorry. I'm not cool. I'm from Texas. I'm a country bumpkin. Why well, I ride a horse to school every morning. And, 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 and we don't have toilet paper either, Joe. We wipes our butt with corn cobs. And then folks from Boston, because everybody from Boston thinks we talk with Alabama accents or Georgia accents, why they think we don't know nothing around here. We don't know nothing about the space bases or nothing about the shadow government or nothing about anything, Joe. Why, I'm just everything I seem, aren't I? Just another. I'm a Texan. And I learned to run along behind you like a little puppy dog. And, and I, I learned how to be big and I learned how to be smart. And I learned about Santa Claus and the Easter bunnies. And I learned all about Hollywood and red carpets and all the big venues and making it in the system. Making it in the Titanic when it's going down. And the only thing popular is things that are facsimiles of the truth or facsimiles of being unscripted or facsimiles of being out in the open but they aren't and it's that slide from that that has triggered this critique so when i chastise my friends when i get in their face about things that i've seen and slides towards uh entropy i'm doing it because i care about everybody i care about my kids and it's critical that the number one independent media personality out there, Joe Rogan, I'll just give him the title, not slide into that oblivion. And that's why I did this, because my conscience has been telling me to do it. And I've told my son, don't play it around me. And I've told the crew, stop telling me what he's saying, because I didn't want to do this, but I have to. And now I think I'm going to start doing it all the time. And believe me, <laughs> I'll show everybody who thinks Texans are stupid, just how smart I am. I got all of it. You think I'm stupid. I'm not. You know, the Patriots at the Pentagon, at CENTCOM, and the people at the CIA, they've got my show on everywhere. They've got it up on the big jumbotrons inside the command centers. Why? Because I'm not bragging here, but you, anybody know what I've done? Does anybody know who I am? You don't think I don't have five steps ahead of all this crap? but we're not going to fix this playing these games anymore. So stop acting like we don't know what's going on. I'm done. Shut it down. Whew. It's a war. We're in a civil war. And sometimes in Virginia, you'd have two brothers fighting with each other, wouldn't you? Well, I'm on the Republican side. <laughs> and the globalists are going to lose. Just remember that. If you hadn't figured out yet that you can't ride the fence on this, you're not as smart as I thought you were. I told Joe that about a week before Trump got elected on the phone. I said, I said, Trump's going to 100% win. He goes, really, really? And I said, yeah, watch. And I told everybody else that, and they didn't believe me. I knew. Because if Trump didn't win, something else was about to happen. <laughs> you people. You globalists think you're the only ones that run your big mouths and carry a little stick? We don't run our mouths. We carry a big stick. We walk softly and carry a big stick. And I know everybody's a big tough guy out there politically. I get it. But all of you are going to find out, we're going to follow this through to the end. And we're going to win. You know, someone very profoundly once said many years ago that if fascism ever comes to America, it'll come in the name of, li of liberalism. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. If you
You are receiving this transmission. You are the resistance. Extendowise, the latest product from InfoWarsLife.com, fuses all the known compounds that have been proven to be good for our hearts and cardiovascular system. And listen, everybody's got a heart. Well, actually, maybe Hillary and George Soros don't, but everybody else has a heart, and this product is amazing. So, if you have a heart and you want the very best product out there that's designed to aid a healthy heart and cardiovascular system, it's Extendowise, available at InfoWarsLife.com. And like all of our products are game changers, this baby is the most souped up, awesome version the top formulators can come up with and still be affordable. It's one of the very best heart pills out there. It's Extendowise. So get some for yourself and family and friends. It's got the very best fish oil from the Fjords. It's very, very pure, very, very clean and has the EPA type that is specifically good for the heart, cardiovascular system. Uh, it's got the properly formulated type of CoQ10 and more. It is Extendowise, now available at InfoWarsLife.com.